people treat me like I'm a little girl, like I'm a little bit less, you know. I was just like, oh, okay, so then I'm not a dude. I'm kind of like, yeah, there's, oh, I am a little girl and it makes a huge difference to be one because people mm -hmm. treat you extremely different. Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. My name is Belgian Jasper. If this is your first time in the channel, hit subscribe right now. Luana, thank you so much for your time today. I really do appreciate it. It's been a, a hectic last few weeks to say the least, uh, or well, last few years, I should say. Maybe we should just get started straight away there. Luana, I think you joined Nervosa in 2017 or so. That's like six years ago only. And in six years, you've had a career that has been, well, more crazy uh, and, and, and more things have happened than people usually have in 20 years. Do you at all in that, in that time, do you have a chance to take a step back and, and, and reflect and look back go like, wow, this was fucking insane, as you like to say about things? Um, or, or do you not have the time for that? Uh, I would say just recently I had the realization that uh, I have been doing this for some time now and that for the time that I've been doing this, it's like you said, it's very fucking crazy. <laughs> I started in Rosa in the end of 2016 and before that I did have a band and we played like in the area, some small shows here and there uh, throughout the year. But that was it really and then when I got into Nervosa it was like straight from nothing to like touring everywhere all the time, like yeah, being yeah. three months on the road and just never coming back really, like coming back for three days and then going to another tour and another tour. And just the first time I really stopped touring was when pandemic hit and then mm -hmm. I stayed home for two years and now with crypto we're kind of like touring a lot again. I don't know, um, kind of crazy as you said, but also like i mean sometimes it's tiring but it made me so much better as a drummer just the okay. other day i was watching like old videos from when i got into nervosa and comparing to stuff that i'm trying to release now with the new album for, for krypta and it's just like almost it's almost another person i would say yeah because yeah. i'm like so embarrassed at my own videos so yeah i mean it's it's a lot but it also helped a bunch i would say You're just a well-known drummer now in the international metal scene. You're, you're, you know, seven years ago, you may have not thought that you would be sponsored by specific brands and be featured in magazines and stuff like that. Is that over, you know, when you were working on, on whether it's new, new material and writing and recording or now creating content, is that, is that an extra level of pressure that you feel? Uh, I definitely feel some level of pressure, like, like I said, in 2016 even, like people didn't even know about my existence at all. Right. And I didn't have videos playing on the internet because I was ashamed of my drumming as I should at the time because it was terrible. <laughs> but yeah, like I was completely anonymous and uh, yeah. it hasn't been that long as you said. And now suddenly like I have all this attention on me and just like people requesting that I post stuff and that I keep up with my medias, you know, and keep on showing my work and it's I mean I I know I got better but I still like it's it's not a lot of time to like change all that much I, I still feel very much like back in the days in which like yeah, if yeah, I yeah. could be anonymous about it I would the only reason I post and keep up is because like I have to because it's like basically my work now my full-time job to be honest right. playing, playing drums for crypto but it, it adds a lot of pressure I would say um for example I'm always trying to get better each album, but um, it's also like we're touring all the time and we don't have all the time to be practicing, you know, like yeah, every yeah, day, yeah. like practicing for real. So I know I got to keep up with stuff because people are watching now. It's not like back in the days that I could just do whatever and no one right, could care right. about. <laughs> yeah, 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 no, for sure. People are going to like with reviews, you know, album reviews, we're going to really dig into it and analyze it. So mm -hmm. do I. Uh, when I was listening to the new album, um, and maybe it's just me uh, projecting as uh, not just a fan of you guys, but fans of bands from back in the day. Um, 
and uh, it, I feel like from a drumming perspective, specifically from what the atmosphere that you're creating, uh, I'm getting like, you know, a lot of Celtic Frost vibes, 90s vibes, uh, Testament uh, as well. Are am, am I onto something or am I just like, you know, no, Jasper, you're just listen, you're just hearing the stuff you want to hear. Um, it's tricky to say because like every interview or like review we get from this new album, we get different band names for <laughs> influences that people heard from it. It's just because I think the album is very diverse. Mm -hmm. Like, um, it's not just pure death metal. Like, we call death metal overall because it's just easier than tagging it a lot with a bunch of other stuff. But in reality, like, there is trash metal going on here and there. There is yeah. lots of black metal going on in this, in this new album. And there is, like, some death metal that might sound like specifically melodic death metal. And also some others that are, are like, I would. I don't know. Like, I wouldn't say that they they have a they have a foot uh, on grindcore, but they're just fast and full of blast beats and very yeah, yeah, ignorant yeah. riffs. So, I mean, it's very easy to catch up on many influences while you're right. listening to the new album. I live in Canada. I live here for a long time, but I am originally from Belgium, so I was half. Uh, you know, uh, you know, it was passionate to see uh, people like Belgian bands, and I do believe you've wear, uh, you've worn uh, some Carnation T-shirts a few times, uh, which is one of the best new Belgian death metal bands uh, around. Um, so, uh, are are you staying close to what's popping out? Like, are there some discoveries you've made that you want to share? I think so. Um, Carnation is one band that I like a lot and I'm always following up. They just released a new album, which is amazing and I highly recommend it to people. <laughs> and I'm always searching for new bands here and there. Like um, currently I've been listening to a band, from, well, some bands from the US, but one specifically called Aberration. I don't know okay. if it's uh, pronounced like that, Aberration. So. Um, and another one from Canada, actually, that is called Edenist, I think. The pronunciation yeah. of the band. Yeah, I never really. Yeah, well, awesome bands. And what else could I recommend? Well, there's um, Hyper Hyperdontia, which I think is a big one. Like lots of people know them. Uh, Mortuous as well, a band from the U.S. that I'm following up with. Uh, damn it, there's so many bands. <laughs> Uh, and we might see you take some of these bands uh, on the road with you. You are, you've just announced, as we are recording this interview at least, uh, you've just announced uh, the, 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 the expected return to the United States, uh, given visa costs these days. Uh, we see bands do, you know, as many tours as they can to squeeze out as much. Um, mm -hmm. And you are going to go on the road um, in a few months from now. Basically, in winter time, you're going to start uh, in the south, you're going to focus on Florida, Texas, and then the east coast a little bit more this time. Um, everybody watching this interview obviously knows what a what 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 a what a what a crazy experience the last tour was uh, for for you guys as a band and and everything you had to deal with. Um, so, what's that like going into the preparation for this? Is there is it all excitement or is there some level of PTSD like, oh fuck, what are we getting started uh, with again? Uh, I would say it's all excitement. Um, of course, like it was a pretty traumatic event what happened right. at, the, at the tornado day. But um, I mean, we hope that this time everything will just go well. Because um, talking to my friends from the US, most of them have, have never experienced the tornado before right so as i understand it's not that common to be involved in one it's just that we were incredibly incredibly unlucky when it mm -hmm. happened especially yeah. like from from the moment we parked there it was already unlocked unlucky so um yeah well hopefully everything will go well and this time we're expecting to actually you know have a tour in which in, in which we can like you know, come back with some money from it and really like, you know, it's our job still to be playing music. So 
we hope to be able to work for that period and get at least something out of it this time because last yeah. time we were supposed to and everything was going so well for us really like a tour of morbid angel what could be better than that you know it doesn't really get much better but then the tornado thing completely destroyed us in many many levels so this yeah. time hopefully everything will go well and we can actually work properly and you know get get the fruits of our work at the end <laughs> Fernanda has told me several times that she's a little bit afraid of you at times as well. Uh, I, I think that started, especially when at the, what was it, the, uh, the, the the video clip that you guys shot where you basically said that you didn't mind pulling your own coffin and stuff like that, or oh, that you enjoy right. pulling a coffin, as, depending on who's in it, if, if, if I'm paraphrasing. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and you guys seem to have this, this, this vibe where she's like the... You know, the big sister and you're like the mischievous little sister. Uh, is there any truth to that? I would say so. Uh, well, when I got to meet Fernando, like I'm, I'm a little younger than, than Fernanda. And when I got to meet her back in the days, she already had like a career with Nervosa and, you know, was already doing this kind of thing. And I was still very fresh to it. So there is that sense that, you know, I... I I came later, like nowadays, like with Crypto, we started together and really mm -hmm. praised the band as much as we could together. But back then when I started, it was just like I, I, I got into her band. So there is that sense that she's just like the, the older sister. <laughs> yeah. You guys have been pulling people from all ages, all backgrounds. Uh, we see people that are well in their 60s at your shows, but we also, and I saw that also at the European run, and you know, we had to sit that out uh, just uh, in, in Europe uh, a few weeks ago. Um, a lot of young girls at your shows. And I know that that's something you're very passionate about. Tell me more about that. I mean, when I started to play drums, I didn't have any male, influ uh, I don't have any female influences, sorry. Uh, and not that there is a problem with that, of course there isn't, but mm -hmm. it would have been cool if I had, you know, like, um, I just kind of created my own style, uh, um, I think, just the way that I put myself out there, the way I promote myself, the way I want to look on stage and this, this and that, based on these guys that I very much admire, but what if I had like a female example of this, you know, like it would mm -hmm. have been just so much easier maybe and I would have understood my my place in the scene so much easier because yeah. when I was a teen, I was just like, I behaved like I was a boy and I thought I was a boy and that was it. And then when I started and also like I only had these male influences, these guys mm -hmm. playing drums and then I was just like in my head, I was just a guy as well. And then when I got to grow up a bit and then I started to go out there and play drums in front of people and then I saw that people were treating me like I wasn't a guy, like I'm clearly a little girl around people, you know, like people treat me like I'm a little girl, like I'm a little bit less, you know. I was just like, oh, okay, so then I'm not a dude. I'm kind of like, yeah, there's, oh, I am a little girl and it makes a huge difference to be one because people mm -hmm. treat you extremely different and then i think it would have been just much easier if i had an example of also another woman doing what i'm doing so i could situate myself better and where i was and how to behave around this scene you know around metal and it is very important for us uh for me especially i would say that it's the most important thing to mm -hmm. know that I am nowadays being someone's um, reason to start playing drums and play it like for real, not play to get any attention or to be appealing or to do this or to do that, but to seriously get the instrument and go and practice it. Uh, mm -hmm. It's so very cool to see these little girls come into the gigs and commenting that they just bought their first kit and that they are learning and that I'm um, their main influence because I'm like this woman that they saw and thought it was very cool. Like I would never imagine get, getting to this place and 
I feel mm-hmm. like it's very privileged for me to be in this position. I, I hope to be a good example, <laughs> to keep on being a good example, because it's a, the coolest thing that I do is being able to do that. Uh, another thing that people that have been following you know that you're passionate about and we see some of it in the shop behind you i think is uh collecting antiques i don't know if you have a lot of time to do that on the road i do believe your strategy was to find out where people recently died and then see if you can buy their their old stuff um so uh what's uh, what's recently been added to the collection what are you particularly proud of Ooh, what I'm particularly proud of, um, I will say it's a mirror that I got that is 100 years old, that it's at the corner of my living room. <laughs> I live in a very small city, like very far from everything. So for me to get these big antiques is like a, a work of a month. Just trying to get people to bring them here and to pick them up in another city or state and like just saving up money to like get them and guys to like bring it up because I live in an apartment building without a lift <laughs> so it get it, it goes through the stairs you know so yeah I would say that, that a huge mirror that I have that was just very difficult to drive here and to get into the apartment <laughs> and um, next big one will be like a Dracula um, sculpture like a okay. real sized head that like a friend is sculpting so uh, yeah I'm, I'm passionate about it <laughs> so I um, mean you do realize that you know all the people watching this interview right now that are gonna watch your shows in this North American tour um, they're all gonna come to the show now with antiques they want to give you so you better have some room in your bags to take stuff like that home yeah that that's uh, cool and also chaotic <laughs> exciting to see that the momentum continues to be there that the album is so well received and um, uh, can't wait to see you on that tour um, so with that I just want to say thank you for your time again and um, I wish you the best in this continued release cycle all right yeah thanks for the interview man for watching this video click right here to see more content like it and subscribe to the channel